Introducing the Trading Card Sifter, an affordable alternative to hand sorting your bulk magic cards. Don't worry, this ugly mess is just an initial prototype solely for proof of concept testing. It doesn't even have a real control system yet. So don't worry, the finished version will look much nicer. Hi, my name is Jack, and I'm developing this machine from the ground up. In this video, I'll be sharing the prototype build progress, issues I've encountered, some resulting design changes, and plans for how you can get one yourself. So let's get started. Instead of trying to build out all of the machine's systems at once, it's much easier to tackle a project like this in sections. Because of this, I've been focusing on the card lifting plate, the swipers, and the sliding gantry first. There is obviously more to do, but I want to share all the fun I've had so far. First up is the card lifting plate. In my mechanical design overview video, I mentioned that this plate may create too much friction as it slides up and down. And the plate's notched edges may cause some excess friction. And I was right. After receiving two copies of the plate, I tested one out and it did not go well. My tolerances were too tight, the sharp corners dug into the extruded aluminum, and it was too thin to remain level consistently. I suspected the sharp corners to be the main culprit, so I took a hand file and spent a painstaking few hours rounding all of the edges and removing excess material. It didn't change much. So then I took some pliers, broke the tabs off entirely, and again spent a few painstaking hours filing the edges smooth. Now, after all that, it still didn't work. I finally designed and printed a few plastic gliders that bolt on underneath the platform. They extend past the metal edge and slide much smoother along the aluminum. I also added a top plastic piece to keep the cards from getting scratched on the new metal hardware. The platform finally slides well now and remains level. And before you ask, there isn't a top plastic piece for the right side yet because I don't care about that side. At this stage, I only need one column of cards for testing, so it doesn't really make sense for me to waste plastic there if the part may just change later on. That's also why there's only one chute and swiper arm right now. Up next is the cheap gantry plate I bought. When first installed, it wouldn't slide fully along its intended path. Upon closer inspection, I noticed that the supplied nylock nuts were protruding too low and scraping on the lower aluminum bar. I didn't have any thin M5 nuts on hand, so instead I used an M5 T-nut, which surprisingly works. This fix will do for a prototype, but will of course be changed before actual production. The gantry plate itself may also change, as it's bad. At the moment though, I can't find any better alternatives, so it is what it is. In the same area, the first belt I used for the drive system arrived very warped. This caused it to rub against the extruded aluminum as the gantry slid back and forth. The extra friction limited the gantry's speed and sounded pretty bad. After spending a few days stretching and reworking the belt, I bought a new one. The new belt works much better. One thing that hasn't materialized as an issue yet, but still annoys me, is the attachment method for the vertical stepper motor. A plate like this isn't really designed to bear load in its current orientation. Ideally, I'd like something underneath the stepper motor, or for the plate to extend far enough forwards to rest on the other piece of aluminum. Again, it is what it is. On to better news, the swiper mechanism is great. The thin plastic and soft rubber combo consistently grabs the top card and gently flings it down the chute into oblivion. The servo is pretty weak, and I'm manually actuating the motion right now, so it's a bit janky. With a slightly better servo and actual computer control, this is going to be perfect. I'll probably add a limit switch on the rear here to keep the swiping height consistent, because that has a pretty large impact on the success rate. Another addition of note are the little rubber feet. These things give some nice space underneath the machine and help dampen vibrations. 10 out of 10. If you're wondering why all the plastic components have unused holes, it's because I've built this version to be easy for me to iterate on quickly. It's much easier for me to print and replace smaller parts rather than reprint the entire assembly with each little change. However, the finished version will not have all this unnecessary complexity. Anyways, there's still a ton of work to do, but I'm excited by the progress so far. I've been asked a lot about my end goal here, and yes, I do plan on selling this. I hope to offer a kit version so that mechanically inclined folks can build their own, and a ready-to-run version for those who just want to sort cards. None of that will happen until I have a fully functioning product, though so please be patient. You can be the first to hear about updates and progress by signing up for the email list linked below. If you have the means and would like to financially support the development of this machine, 
I'm now accepting gifts and donations at the links shown here and in the video description below. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more.